Hi, it's simulation time again. If you remember a previous video I did on a switch in tracking pre-regulator for a linear voltage regulator. In this case it was a uh, switch in boost converter, can be any standard type of switch in boost converter, followed by a any type of linear regulator. In this case it was an LT3080 we were looking at. And uh, we base that circuit um, on a P-channel MOSFET, which is M1 here, and that came from a recommendation in the LT3080 data sheet, and it had a few little uh, issues with it, but as it turns out, uh, John Barnes has sent me an alternative circuit to that, so I thought we'd take a look at it, uh, but if you haven't seen the uh, previous video, click here, and you'll be able to watch that first as a background. And in the previous video with this P-channel MOSFET here, we had a few issues of choosing the uh, the correct uh, type of uh, MOSFET and uh, some dropout issues. And we had to, uh, if you wanted to increase the voltage, you have to put a, a diode in series with it or an LED or something like that to boost the voltage up. And it, it did work, um, but it wasn't the best circuit. So John has uh, suggested a... Uh, just as simple a circuit, but it uses a uh, P-channel transistor here, and uh, I thought we'd uh, check it out and see how it compares. And if we take a look at it, it's pretty much uh, identical almost to uh, the MOSFET uh, circuit. We've got our uh, voltage input over here, which might be a battery. I've set it to 2.7 volts, which might be the low end of a single cell lithium ion uh, battery, for example. And we're using an LT1935 boost converter here, but really it's just a standard boost converter. It can be practically any type which operates uh, identically. There's, you know, hundreds of them. So there's nothing unusual there. It doesn't have to be a linear technology type. It can be any kind. And we're using that is the tracking pre-regulator for the LT3080 again. Once again, nothing special with the LT3080. It can be any linear regulator, a 7805, whatever. Um, and we want this tracking pre-regulator voltage up here to uh, be, uh, in this case, uh, around about uh, 2 volts higher, always 2 volts higher than the output. And if we have a look at the circuit, uh, as it turns out, R4 will be the resistor which controls, basically controls the uh, offset uh, voltage here, and it should be fairly independent of the base current. And uh, really, we should have no uh, issues at all with the uh, particular type of transistor used, and our temperature coefficient for this circuit will basically be dependent only upon the uh, temperature coefficient of the base emitter junction here. So let's uh, try it and see what we get. And you can see that John's original circuit uses uh, C1 here. Um, that's obviously included for some sort of stability issue. I'm not convinced that we uh, entirely need that. So we'll try it with and without that. But uh, we can adjust a few parameters here and we're going to use the parameter sweeping feature which I've done a video on before so if you haven't seen that click here and you'll be able to watch that uh, video first so you'll know exactly how we're doing this and of course we're using LT uh, Spice again it's a free circuit uh, simulation tool and it's uh, uh, probably one of the uh, industry standard um, simulation tools now it works really well I highly recommend it so let's uh, run this thing and see what we get so what I've got here is I've got V2, this uh, voltage source here, which sets the output voltage. And I won't go into details of how it does that. You've got to watch uh, previous videos. But I set it to 1 volt here, and which means we'll get 1 volt on the output. So we're looking for 3 volts on our tracking pre-regulator input here. So let's run it. Let's go into simulation, edit our simulation command. We're doing tran transient analysis uh, our stop time is 15 milliseconds so let's just run that pretty basic stuff and you can see that there's some uh, startup stuff there around about 0.3 milliseconds or thereabouts to uh, start up the regulator but uh, that looks like it's working a treat that's at about 2.9 volts or thereabouts so let's have a look here there's our output uh, voltage of course it's not stable at the start there but once it gets there it does stabilize out and there you go uh, we're getting basically uh, one volt out and 
And if we compare those side by side, it's uh, pretty close to uh, 2 volts offset like that. So that's uh, working a treat, no problems at all. So I've changed R4 to 20K here, and let's run that now and give it a look. There it is. We're talking, uh, what are we talking here? We're talking 4 volts or thereabouts. So that's uh, 3 volts above our 1 volt output voltage there. So uh, changing that uh, R4 value from 10K to 20K, doubling that value has increased our voltage from 2 volts to 3 volts. Now, if you're wondering why this uh, simulation takes more time on the 20K one as it did on the 10K one, and we get this uh, transient stuff on the input, it's because the DC to DC converter is now working because we've only got a 3.3 volt input voltage here. Let's stop that. So I've only got a 3.3 volt input voltage and before we are getting a 3 volt tracking pre-regulator which means this is no longer operating as a boost converter. So when this voltage goes down, uh, when our output set voltage is only 1 volt and our configuration here is giving a 2 volts above that tracking pre-regulator, that's below the 3.3 volt input voltage. So if we up this, uh, uh, so if we uh, increase this value again to say 5 volts, then you'll see that it will um, instant, so our input voltage is now 5 volts and our tracking pre-regulator should be 4 volts, so it's below the V in input voltage and Let's run that again, and we should find that there's none of that transient stuff at the start. Bang, and the simulation is instant. That is because that, that DC to DC converter is no longer operating as a boost, and it's got less to uh, analyze. It's going straight through, and bingo, we get our uh, 4 volts um, uh, offset voltage, or thereabouts. So what I've done now is I've gone and changed the output voltage to 5 volts. The input voltage is 3.3 volts. So uh, we're always going to get uh, this thing to work in that boost operation. Our tracking pre-regulator should be 7 volts because we've got our 10K value there. And we run it and you can see that our output voltage in the green there is 2 volts above our output voltage of 5 volts. So it's tracking just fine. And you can see it stabilizes in you know 0.15 milliseconds or thereabouts. So we don't need to run all that simulation time because that actually that'll take some time. So we can knock that down to you know let's say knock it down to 0.5 milliseconds or thereabouts. So we can uh, now run that again and bingo, it it just doesn't take as long. So now we can uh, do some parameter sweeps of uh, let's try our base resistor R1 here and see uh, what effect that has on our tracking pre-regulator voltage. But before we do that, let's just have a look at C1 here. And this is the waveform, okay, 5 volts out, 7 volts tracking pre-reg, and we've got these wiggles here. That's with C1 in the circuit. Let's get rid of C1. So let's go down here, delete C1, and let's run that again and see what we get. Much cleaner start up there without C1. So I'm going to leave C1 out and uh, let's parameter sweep R1. And to do that is real easy. We go in here, instead of 22K, put in the curly brackets, which indicates to the simulator that it's a parameter. We'll call it RP. It's just a label. And then we can go up to our spice directive up here. We can add a spice directive, dot step command, parameter and then the label we gave it which was uh, RP and then the value we want to sweep over well let's go from uh, say uh, oh I don't know let's go 1000 ohms up to 20k in 1000 ohm steps so that'll give us 20 waveforms so we'll sweep through let's put our parameter uh, our um, uh, spice directive on the circuit there and run it so it'll sweep through this R1 value will go from 1k to 20k in 1k increments so we should get 20 different waveforms let's run it and up oh, let's oh, there we go and 
it's stopping and bang that's 1k so that green one was 1k this blue one will be 2k red one will be 3k it looks like it's making absolutely no difference at all now let's do a parameter sweep on our output voltage so v out here i've uh, put i've called it v out actually and we're parameter sweeping there it is our dot step command v out from 1 volt to 10 volt in 1 volt increments should be interesting let's run this and see what we get let's have a look at our output voltage bang so there's our green line one volt blue volts two volts and blue lines two volts reds three four five bang look at that and you'll see it takes up uh, longer to um, uh, stabilize at the start of course the higher voltage you go but it's drawing a very interesting parametric graph there for V out I like it and if we have a look at our tracking pre-regulator voltage that is tracking you'll notice it's tracking two volts above each time very nice and we can just get that on its own of course and there it is so we've got three volts and then it'll be four volts five volts six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve volts it's working a treat what I'm doing now is I've changed the transistor from a uh, 32 in 3906 to a BC 327 and uh, once again it's working just fine not a problems at not a problem at all so by now you're probably uh, thinking this circuit is rather interesting and exactly how does it work because this base resistor here has no effectively no effect and doesn't set this pre-regulator voltage and we can show that if we set it to you know 0.01 ohms for example and then run this thing there's our output voltage and there's our tracking pre-regulator voltage 7 volts 5 volts it doesn't matter what that base resistor value is it can be anywhere from a dead short up to you know hundreds of K and it's going to work just fine so there's nothing that base current is not setting the voltage what is well if you look down at the feedback pin down here if we look at the voltage across R2 down here let's go in it is 1.25 volts there it is and that's no coincidence because that is the band gap voltage reference inside the DC to DC converter and they're all the same they're all going to be around that value because that's the physical construction of the band gap voltage reference in there so that's effectively a constant current source through R2 there, R2, and because we've got a constant voltage across that, 1.25 volts across 10K, that sets a constant current, and we can actually look at that. If we run it, let's look at the current through R2. Here we go. There it is. It's 125 microamps. No surprise. 1.25 volts on 10K is 125 microamps. And you'll notice that if we look at R4, the current through R4 is exactly the same. There's the two of them laid on top of each other because the base current does not contribute at all so uh, the current so the uh, pre-regulator voltage is equal to the constant current set through R2 which gives a constant voltage drop across R4 here so let's shut that down expand it so the voltage pre-regulator voltage here is equal to the constant current through R4 and the voltage drop across that plus the voltage drop of the base emitter junction here and that's it that's what sets the value of the pre-regulator voltage so it depends on the constant current set up here current through there the voltage drop and the base emitter so this circuit is going to be pretty darn good and the only issue there's going to be with it is the uh, temperature dependent uh, dependence of the base emitter junction here so we can actually uh, try that I've set it back to a 2N3906 uh, transistor I've added the uh, spice directive dot step uh, temp so we're going to step, uh, step the circuit temperature from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius in 5 degrees C increments so our base resistor is set back to 10k not that it matters and let's run that and have a look at our tracking pre-regulator voltage with temperature and here you go it's you know there's not much in there in that at all that's a for five degree Celsius jumps there I mean we're, we're talking you know 
We're talking nothing, really. There's very, very little in there. So really, we're only talking about, you know, 100 millivolts or so there over that sort of uh, temperature range of 50 degrees C. And that's not surprising because the typical uh, base emitter junction uh, Temco is going to be about 2 millivolts per degree C. So there you go. I uh, quite like that circuit. So thank you very much, John. Um, I think I'm going to uh, use that one. It's better than the uh, MOSFET uh, circuit recommended in the LT3080 data sheet. Seems to work a treat. And uh, if you uh, want to discuss this, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. And if you like this type of video, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.